How did I build a five-figure business in less than 12 months despite coming into an industry I had no connections? Today I'm going to share with you guys step-by-step -step, exactly how I did just that. Good day subscribers, thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy, this is the Financial Education Channel and today we're talking about my real estate marketing company. How did I build a five figure a year business in less than 12 months? How the hell did I do it? It's something I'm very proud of. I had never built a business before. I had like kind of dabbled and like kind of started up something but never actually went all the way through with it where I actually started selling the product or service and I had all these ideas but I had never really done on it. This is the first business I'd ever really gone through things and made it a success. So how did I do it step by step? We're going to get into all that guys and I hope this will help you if you want to start a business. I hope it will help you guys tremendously with that. So first off, real estate marketing company. Like how did this come about? Well, the backstory is I had thought I was just gonna be able to invest forever, right? I thought I would just be able to live off my investing and that was how I was gonna make a living. Well, then I got caught up into a lot of bad stuff, which you might know about, I've talked about before, where I was margin trading, started short-term trading, lost $75,000. My wealth went down substantially um, and that was after I had already lost a good amount of money the previous year because I had started already getting into that kind of bad stuff, the margin trading, the short-term trading, and stuff like that. So basically, I was left in a situation where I was not gonna be able to make a living from investing because I had screwed up so bad. So what was I gonna do? I was either gonna have to go get a job or I was gonna have to start a business. And I was like, what should I do? Should I just go get another job, be another employee again, make 40, 50, 60,000 a year, or should I go try to start a business? And I had already done the corporate thing. I had already done that and I was just like, I'm meant to be an entrepreneur, I need to start a business. And then my thought was like, what kind of business am I, am I gonna start? And I thought about like a perfume company, and I thought about like, you know, these different type of ideas, and I had still a decent amount of money, so money wasn't so much an issue as far as starting the business. Not like I needed to go to banks and get loans and some things like that. Like, you know, I was willing to put in five, 10, $15,000 into starting a business, whatever it took. Um, and my thing, my also thing, my thinking was I need to start a business that's as cheap as possible, but can be as profitable as possible. So I thought about this perfume company. I even contacted a perfume manufacturer, um, talked with them, and I, had, uh, you know, talked over with a friend, and I explained to him, you know, how I was going to go about doing it, uh, as far as like getting people on. And this is before, like, this was uh, over a year and a half ago, even more than a year and a half ago, because this was like l late to mid 2015 at this point. And I said, you know, I was gonna get people on Instagram to have the perfume bottles and stuff like that, which is kind of like starting to become a more of a popular thing now where, you know, these people that have huge followings, they have a product or service, they they advertise in their video and they get paid $500 for it or their photos, they get paid a thousand bucks for it. I was talking about that back then and that's how I was gonna kind of go about things. Well, then I was like, no, that wasn't gonna work. So then what I did is I thought, I was watching a show called Million Dollar Listings Los Angeles and they show these beautiful homes and whatnot. And I happen to live in an area that has, I don't, I don't live in a mansion or anything like that. I live in a three bedroom apartment, but it happens to be in a beautiful area where I'm surrounded by Oh my gosh, I almost knocked this over. <laughs> Surrounded by mansions. Uh, the, you know, you go down my street and it's like uh, freaking uh, a car fest. There's Lamborghinis, Ferraris going all over the place. It's like ridiculous. I live in this insane area. So I got it very inspired between watching that million dollar listing show and seeing all these beautiful homes and I thought, why is no one really taking drone stuff seriously as far as marketing these homes and taking video seriously? Uh, they, like all these homes that are beautiful that go up for sale, they should all not just have professional pictures done, they should all have professional videos done. And so I thought I can come in here and charge 400, 500 bucks for a video, do these beautiful videos of these homes, get them put on YouTube, all the social media and all that kind of stuff, get it figured out where it can go on the MLS as well. I can do this. And how I thought about how I could do this was no one was really doing it. No one was taking it seriously. 
And the reason, usually I have my iPad here and I have like step by step is because there's a lot of steps like there's, in step one there's like 800 different things in step one and step two there's like 800 different things, right? So I'm thinking, you know, that's a possibility there. I was thinking how much will it cost me to start this business and it was around four to $5,000. I can get all the equipment I need, everything I need, about four or $5,000, which was definitely very affordable for me. It wasn't like I needed to go take out a loan or something like that or I was gonna have no money to live off of. So I thought, okay, that is great. Now, is it realistic? I was thinking at the same time, is it realistic for me to get this company off the ground? How am I gonna get the first couple homes to do and those kinds of things? I have no experience doing this. I had no experience fucking filming a house so that's a million dollars or $10 million. I had no experience doing this. Lucky enough, I had some connected friends who have friends or family that live in these lavish type homes. So I was able to get into a couple of those homes and do videos on them. So I already had like this credibility built up when I went to actually email customers, which is also part of point one, because I was thinking, how am I gonna get in front of customers' faces? How am I gonna tell people about my product? And I thought, well, with realtors, it's pretty easy because realtors want to get out all their contact information. So all their phone numbers are listed, all their email address, which is email address is the main way I need to contact them because I want to send them video links and all this kind of stuff and explain about my products and services. So email is the best way. So therefore, I can get in front of these customers very easy. All I need to do is email them or give them a call or go to their office and talk to them for a minute. So this is a very easy. So it's realistic for me to have the money to start it. And this is, if you're gonna start a business, this has gotta be realistic. Do you have the money to start it? Is it realistic to somehow get it off the ground, which was my way of, let me do a few homes of friends and family who were nice enough to let me do that, right? And then the last part is, um, you know, how can I get in front of customers? How can I tell customers about my product? And that was easy and I didn't have to pay any money to acquire these email addresses or phone numbers and things. So it was all, I was seeing the vision. So I bought all the equipment, I did the, the you know, the test runs and stuff like that, the first few videos, and then I started reaching out to high-end realtors. And what I found is there was not that many people interested in it, there wasn't. Um, I found my first real one was a lady in St. George, worked for Sotheby's and she in St. George, Utah, not even in Nevada, not even in Nevada. So I had to get a St. George uh, business certificate or whatever as well, or for Utah. So uh, she contacted me, did a couple homes for her, and they were ridiculous homes. They were homes I had no business, honestly, filming at that time. Uh, one was going up for sale for like over $3 million up in the mountains, like ridiculous. Like I had no business being in that home. But you know what I did have? Confidence. I had confidence and I, you know, when she called me and, you know, we set that up, was I nervous on the phone? Absolutely I was nervous, but I wasn't nervous enough where I turned her off. I sounded confident enough. I sounded enough confidence in myself that I could do this. I could do this project. So I did that and then that gave me even more credibility because now I had some friends homes I had done that were pretty nice homes, but I had this new home that I had done that was over $3 million and it was for Sotheby's, one of the, the most prestigious type uh, real estate companies. So now we're talking about I have a portfolio of some legit stuff. I mean, when you go in the real estate industry, if you film a $3 million plus dollar house or do photos for it, that's equivalent of like shooting Giselle or you know some supermodel that's super famous, you know, uh, being Beyonce's photographer or something like that. Like, you know, these opportunities don't just come to everybody. I just believed in myself that I could go out and do it and I got enough chances, thank goodness, that it made it happen. So then I started emailing people. A few more people were interested. And what I started realizing was not just everybody was interested in luxury home videos. Like I needed to broaden my, my portfolio if I was gonna make this business a success because there was not nearly enough money coming in. So then I had a customer contact me um, that worked for Berkshire Hathaway, uh, which if you guys don't know, Berkshire Hathaway, which is owned by Warren Buffett, it actually they have a real estate arm, which is also kind of prestigious as well. It's kind of like a little lower version of Sotheby's. So they contacted me. They said, you know, can you do some community videos for us and community photos and stuff like that? And I was like, yeah, I don't see why not. And I had to come up with a price for this on the spot. And I so far underpriced it. It was ridiculous. I, I way underpriced it. But I was desperate at that time. I was absolutely desperate. I needed business. I needed money. Um, so I did it. And that brought in me because now I have this portfolio of I do these community videos, I do these community photos. So then I started being able to email people and it wasn't just I did um, luxury home videos, 
I also do community videos and community photos, so I got a few more customers coming in, and now I got a couple of customers that were luxury video and a couple of customers who uh, were interested in the community type stuff. Then I started realizing that people were not, when they would contact me back, they wouldn't just want videos, but they wanted to try to use me as their photographer. So, and I kind of fought this off for a little bit, which was stupid. It was absolutely stupid. I was like, no, I'm just a video guy, and I lost opportunities on some big customers out there that were interested in what I had, but they wanted me to be the total package, the photographer and the videographer. And I was like, no, I don't do that. And slowly but real, uh, surely I realized, you know what, this is not gonna cut it. Doing community videos, luxury homes, the real money is in the photography and then everything else can be a side dish around the photography because everybody needs professional photos. Every realtor needs professional photos when they put a house in the market nowadays. Everybody's online, you gotta have great photos. If you don't have great photos, you're gonna get less money and less people interested in the home, it's just a fact. So what I realized is, damn it, I gotta do this. I gotta take it seriously. So I upgraded my camera and I've actually upgraded it since then, I upgraded it to this camera. An 80D I actually use now, which is, which is even upgraded from the last one I had. But I upgraded my camera, I started practicing like crazy. I was horrible at first, it was not good product, it wasn't. I had, you know, some customers, not a lot of customers, but like maybe one or two customers kind of complaining. I had to go back for reshoots and things like that. Um, but one thing is, like in business, if you are, if people like you, they're gonna, there's a better chance they're gonna like your product. Like if people like you and they're, they're comfortable around you and things like that and they want your, you to succeed, then you have a lot easier chance of succeeding and them giving you second and third chances to make it right than if, if you um, are not likable. So treat every customer with great respect um, be likable, those kinds of things. Study psychology around humans, uh, what people like and do not like, and pay attention to people and give them respect. Give them a lot of respect, these customers that do come to you when they do come to you, because that's gonna be a key differentiator in whether you get a second or third opportunity to make it right when you do screw up, because you will screw up, <laughs> absolutely, when you start a business, some things are gonna go wrong. Um, problem solving. Then I realized, you know, there would be problems, you know, that, oh, I can't get this link, oh, and I had to, you know, change services I was using, and then I started using Dropbox and Google Drive and some of those kinds of things, and it started working a lot better. Problem solving, like, huge for me, like, whenever you start a business, and even if you're like in a management position for a company, like you realize there's like fires going out all the time, right? There's always things going wrong. There's always something going on. There's always something going wrong that you have to fix. And I would fix these problems and I would find them in a, in a timely fashion. So then what I did is I started changing up my email style to not focus on the luxury video side because there's only so many homes in the luxury video side, right? And there's only so many customers that want community videos for branding. Everybody wants for photos. So what I started doing is I started, once I started actually getting good at photos, I would start including in the links um, my photography. And I would say, um, you know, I would market myself as a photographer who also happens to do luxury home videos and community tours and some of these other products and services and virtual tours and those kinds of things. But my main thing is, I do still photos, and what I did is I underpriced my competition. I underpriced it. Why did I underprice it? Well, one, because if you underprice something, there's a better chance you're probably gonna get a customer in the end, because especially in the real estate industry, you know, realtors, some of them are, a lot of them are hurting. Like, a lot of them don't have the kind of money to spend, um, you know, $200 on a photo package, but $99 they might. So there's a different there's a difference there and some customers have unlimited budget because they're doing something well and that's fine as well. I can win those ones as well. But mainly because my product just wasn't as good as other people. And if you, you can't sell a, a poor product that's not as good as someone else for a lower price, now my product's just as good as anybody. But back then, hell no. There was, I was probably the worst uh, real estate photographer in Las Vegas, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I probably was, but I was still winning business because my price came in under other people, and some houses, you know, $200,000, $300,000 houses, realtors would look at that as, you know, if the photos are just okay, that's good enough. I don't need great photos. The problem I would have is when the luxury home type people would want photos, I wasn't quite good enough at that stage. So, and I just kept kind of building from there and building from there up until about last fall. And what happened last fall is I had a decision to make. Was I gonna keep funneling all this time and energy into the real estate company, or was I gonna start funneling more and more time into YouTube? And I made the decision that I was gonna stop emailing, I was gonna stop building that business. And I was just gonna keep that business where it's at, 
and try to keep the customers I already have and spend all that extra time on YouTube. And boy, is it paid off and it will pay off even more over the next couple of years. Um, but that was a decision I had to make. Was I just gonna keep building that? Which I could have, and it would probably be, if I kept building it, I probably would be doing, I don't know, maybe $5,000 in revenue a month. Like, let's say somewhere around there. I, if I kept building it and kept focused on it, right now I'd probably be doing $5,000 plus a month in revenue. But at this stage already, like I'm doing $5,000 plus between all my YouTube related stuff. And that, that's gonna compound a lot more and it's passive income. So I had to make a decision. What business was I gonna go with? Which YouTube didn't even start out to be a business. And we're not talking about YouTube today because that's a whole different um, you know, story of that. But uh, I didn't start this out to be a business. It just happened to be that it kind of blew up and then the money started coming and it was like, I gotta either focus on YouTube more, which is where the, the, the possibility is huge for me, or whether this po possibility over here is like, okay. So the real estate company now in, in current times is just, I just, keep it consistent. I just keep the customers happy who do business with me. I don't reach out to anybody else. I'm not looking to put more time into that because that's not passive income. So that's how I built it, guys. Honestly, that's the whole story behind it. And uh, I think I covered everything, you know, it started as just an idea and just built from there. And you know, what I built is what I built and I built a five figure a year business and I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm honestly very proud of it. And um, is it a six figure or seven figure or eight figure business in 12 months? No, but it's it's practical it's realistic for someone else to start a business like that like if you can start a five figure a year business in the first 12 months like you succeed you win in the, in the entrepreneurship game guys so i hope this helped you guys immensely and understand my business if you just came across this channel you may want to subscribe we talk personal finance on the channel we talk entrepreneurship i'm an actual business owner as we just talked about i give away so many business tips as this video hopefully helped you guys tremendously we talk the stock market more than anything Thank you for watching guys and have a great day.